Hello, we're here at the National Forensic Academy and we're in the uh, controlled environment of a laboratory, but we're going to demonstrate collection of biological evidence. Now, biological evidence could be semen, saliva, blood, or other bodily fluids. Uh, for demonstration purposes today, we're going to discuss the collection of blood. Given consideration to touch DNA, which is a very sensitive DNA testing, um, when you grab gloves out of the box, you should always try to grab the base end as opposed to the fingertips and avoid touching those if possible. So you grab from the bottom end of the glove and put them on. That, av that hopefully avoids getting your DNA on the fingertip portion of the glove that you're going to be touching evidence with. Another consideration would be to have two pair of gloves on. So the first pair of gloves will be what you may use to write your notes with or uh, if you have to take a phone call in the crime scene, you could always use that first layer of gloves for that type of stuff. And then if you're gonna do evidence collection, you actually go to a second pair of gloves with the same idea in mind. If possible, grab from the base end of the glove This is ideal for uh, personal protection as well because at the, once you've got two pair of gloves on and you've collected a sample, you simply take the outer layer off and discard that and you still have a pair of gloves on in the crime scene so that you're not contaminating anything or more importantly not getting contamination on yourself. So there's really three different types of uh, stains we're going to talk about in this presentation. Although in real life situations, there's several other, there's things like touch DNA um, and, and several other situations where you may be asked to collect biological evidence. For demonstration purposes, first we're going to discuss the collection of wet blood stains. So for that, the first thing that you're going to want to do is fill out a swab box Swab boxes are commercially available. They're very nice for uh, containing the swabs that you've collected the samples with. And it's easiest if you'll fill out the information on the swab box, such as a case number, um, and then go into the collection of the sample itself. The information that you should put on a swab box is the case number, the date, some people prefer to put the time of collection, and your name and item number at a minimum. So once you've filled out the swab box, go ahead and close the one end and prepare it for collection. It's always recommended to use prepackaged sterile swabs. Some of them come packaged in one, some of them come packaged in two, but this should be done as opposed to the large boxes that contain a, a group of just open swabs. We always want to make sure that we're gloved up with fresh gloves in between each sample. Since this is one stain, we can go ahead and collect them with uh, using swabs in one hand. The idea in mind here is to get as much of the sample on the swabs as possible. So twirling them around to make sure that they're fully covered is ideal. Because these swabs are collected from the same sample, they can be packaged together. So if, if the situation is you've got this wet of a sample, a lot of times what you want to do is dry it first. And there's many different uh, methods of setting up a drying chamber or whatever. This is simply one of them. So once you've got the swabs dried, they're then packaged into the box. And the box is then uh, placed into paper packaging of some sort, either a sack or an envelope, sealed up and labeled. In between each item of evidence, Always change gloves. So now we're going to discuss collection of 
blood stained items where the blood is already dried, which will be the case most of the time. In this scenario, again, fill out the, um, fill out the swab box with the pertinent information. Now, because the stain is dried, we're going to need to collect it using a little bit of water. So we want to take a, uh, some sterile water, either distilled water or sterile water that can be pre-purchased -pur and uh, pre-packaged like this. One to two drops of water is all that's needed on the swab because if you put too much, you will be diluting the sample and lessening the chances of getting DNA back in the laboratory. Again, because we're going to collect from one particular stain, these can be uh, done at the same time. The idea in mind is to concentrate as much of that blood on the surface of the swab as possible. And even though that was a relatively small area, you can see that by Doing that method, you can get quite a little bit of blood on there and even some more on the opposite side as well. Once that's done, you want to place it back into the swab container, close it, and package this into a separate paper packaging, either paper or an envelope. We're going to move on to collection of a biological stain that's very small in nature. If you have a very small blood stain, for example, that you need to collect. In order for the laboratory to have the best chance of getting DNA, you're going to want to uh, concentrate the blood on the end of just one swab. So in this scenario, we have several different very tiny in nature stains. Many of these are less than a millimeter in size. So this time instead of using two, we're going to use just one swab. We're going to make sure that we don't put very much water on it, so just a single drop. And I'm going to concentrate it at the end. Now what you want to be careful and do is, is uh, always keep the water a little bit away and drop it down onto the swab so that if you're using uh, sterile water like this uh, for several different samples, you're not actually touching it to the swab. So we have a drop of water at the end of the swab, and we're going to just concentrate our sample there. Now, if you have a scenario like this where you have several different drops as part of the same pattern, you could collect those together. But if you're down to just even a single drop, you can see that you can concentrate blood on the end of that swab very well just doing that. So again, same scenario. Make sure that the swab box is filled out prior to the collection. Build the swab box and drop it in. Then package it into paper, never plastic, and label it and identify it.